Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. I am your host, The Millennial Investor, and today we're going to be going over the top 10 stocks that every single dividend investor should own. So you know me, if you follow my channel, if you're familiar with what I do, I invest strictly in dividend stocks and primarily focusing on stocks that both have a great dividend yield or have great dividend growth ahead of it. And these 10 stocks are stocks that every investor should own for not only their dividend yield, their dividend growth opportunities, but their solid fundamentals and great business models that are going to be sustainable for the long term. So those of you that know me, my name is Jordan. I am the millennial investor. I track my annual dividend income, my monthly dividend income, my portfolio value, and one thing that a lot of YouTubers do not disclose, I even disclose my YouTube income on a monthly basis. And you can see all this tracked right here. I update this every single month. And you can even see a breakdown of my total YouTube revenue, my total YouTube expenses, and then all the stocks that I own, every single one, my cost basis and the amount that they pay me. And I disclose everything so if you're new to the channel I will not only be showing you the 10 stocks that I recommend for the top 10 for all dividend investors to own but I'll also show you the 30 different companies that I own show you where I own them at and show everything in my portfolio from deposits withdrawals dividends everything so if you appreciate the transparency and you would like to support the channel go ahead and use this referral link down in the description this referral link is in the description along with lots of other links and lots of other information there's information about me information about mentoring ship calls credit card referrals all different types of stuff and if you want to do that you can sign up for M1 Finance and deposit $100 to the platform and you'll get ten dollars absolutely free just for signing up so if you're interested in that go ahead and use that right there but let's go ahead and get started I just went down the list and just chose the top ten of my portfolio that I think everyone should own and I sorted it by sector so I have one stock in healthcare I have five different stocks in consumer I have two different stocks in industrial I have one real estate or real estate investment trust company I have a financials a big bank and then I have a technology company and these are the top ten that everyone should own so let's go ahead and get started with my one healthcare company let's go ahead and take a look at Johnson & Johnson so Johnson & Johnson makes up 3% of my portfolio. I'm currently up 8.72% on it, and I believe they pay dividends up in the next coming weeks. But yeah, with Johnson & Johnson, it is just an incredible company overall. Now, a couple things I want to point out here. If you want to stop and pause and read the description right there, you can go ahead and do that. But this is one of the oldest healthcare companies in the United States. You can see it was founded in 1886 in the 1800s. This pays a 2.6% dividend yield. That dividend gets raised annually every single year for 40 something years in a row as their continual dividend streak. You can see how it's went from 75 cents up to 80 cents to 84 cents to 90 to 95. And then now this year in 2020, they just raised it again to $1.01, about a six, six and a half percent raise. So an incredible raise there, even in the worst of recessions. And there's one thing I want to point out here about Johnson & Johnson. There's a couple stocks of this list of 10 that I want to point out, and a couple of them are like this. And Johnson & Johnson is one that is extremely defensive in recessions. Do you notice something here? The recession hit, and it hit its all-time high after the recession. It's trickled down a couple dollars since then, but this stock is basically at all-time highs. And considering that we're in the worst of recessions and that Johnson & Johnson is able to thrive in any environment, that definitely bodes well as an investor. So knowing that you're not only getting an increasing dividend income every single year, your share price gains will be quite significant if you're holding the stock for the long term. So when it comes to stock in the healthcare sector, there's no stock that I would put above Johnson & Johnson. There's some great ones, but I think healthcare companies sometimes get a bit overrated, except when it comes to Johnson & Johnson, because every single person should own it. Next up, let's go ahead and move to the consumer sector. And I want to group these two stocks together because they are extremely similar business models. We're talking about PepsiCo and we're talking about Coca-Cola. Now, the only main two differences between these stocks for me is that I own one more percent in Pepsi at 5% and I own 4% in Coca-Cola. And there's two reasons why. And the first one is a little bit of personal bias. I am a huge fan of the brands that Pepsi owns with their Cheetos, Doritos, and especially their Mountain Dew brands. But I like that PepsiCo has snack foods in their portfolio of products and Coca-Cola does not. Coca-Cola is just beverages and PepsiCo is beverages and snack foods. So with PepsiCo, you're getting a little bit more diversification, a little bit more of a broader audience that you can market to. 
With Pepsi, I am up 9.22% and it's 5% of my portfolio. You can see in the last five years, it is up a whopping 35.51%, which is pretty good considering that this is a very old blue chip stock. And I don't know why these dividends are not loading in, but they have raised dividends every single year for about 50 plus years now. You can see the dividends going up from 81 cents to 93 cents, over a 10% raise. Then it went up to 96. And now this year they raised it up to $1.02. And considering once again, same thing as like with the Johnson & Johnson, this stock is just a couple dollars off from its all-time highs. Its all-time high is about $147, and we're about $137 today, so about 10 bucks off. So this stock is still up 5% plus in the last year, and considering that it's up 35% in the last five years, if you look at the track record for Pepsi, it is absolutely incredible. And speaking of incredible track records, Coca-Cola is not far behind it. I'm up 9.17% on it, and Coca-Cola is a stock that is still up in the last five years. It's pretty much break-even, but the dividend yield is a lot higher than that of Pepsi, and the dividend gets raised every single year from 33, 35, 37, 39, 40, 41, just like clockwork, and every single year, I believe, that, is it April? No, it's March. So every year in March, you're going to get a dividend raise. And in the meantime, while you wait for the stock to fully recover from its all-time highs, you can get a whopping 3.4% dividend yield just to own it. So owning the two beverage giants, I think a lot of times people try to segregate Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Like you should own one or the other. Well, in my opinion, it is a mistake if you're not owning both of them. So I think that the company and the management behind this company is fantastic. And you should own both of these stocks because they are easy money stocks if you're willing to hold them for the long term. Next up in the consumer sector, we're looking at ticker symbol PG. We're looking at Procter & Gamble. It is 3% of my portfolio. I'm up 19.8% on it. And Procter & Gamble already had a dividend raise this year. Just like Johnson & Johnson, they're extremely defensive. Now, remember when we talked about all-time highs earlier with Johnson & Johnson and how it hit a new all-time high by about a dollar or two dollars? Well, not only is this at an all-time high, this is at a significant level higher than it was before the recession hit. You can see the peak was about $127. Well, just today, it's at $133, so a couple percent up above its all-time high. And the dividend gets raised every single year, $0.66, cents, $0.67, $0.69, $0.72, $0.75, and now we're up to $0.79 cents and up almost 50% in the last five years, up 45.91%. And you can read the description right there if you're interested. So just lots of miscellaneous items is what they sell that a lot of people take for granted that you don't really think about, like laundry detergents and feminine care products and paper towels and tissues, toilet paper, baby wipes, vitamins, shampoos, deodorants, a lot of things that Procter & Gamble sells is stuff that you don't even know that you're buying from Procter & Gamble from. If you have bought anything inside of a Walmart or Target that's anything relative to what I just mentioned, you've bought Procter & Gamble before. I'm sure 100% of the people watching this video right now have used a Procter & Gamble product at some point in their life, if not every single day. So Procter & Gamble is a stock that everybody should own because it is a stock that is just so well diversified in the consumer sector that you just are going to make money on it in the long run as their stock becomes more and more profitable and they raise that dividend every single year. Next up in the consumer sector, we're going to be talking about a restaurant stock. The only restaurant stock that I would ever consider adding to this list. We're talking about Warren Buffett's favorite. We're talking about McDonald's stock. I'm up 26.13% on it, and it's 4% of my portfolio, and I've even considered bumping it up higher recently. I'm thinking about making some moves coming up this week, which I'll update you guys on. But I think a lot of people sleep on McDonald's stock. To consider that this stock is up 90%, almost or like a penny or two away, from 90% in the last five years, and the dividend is almost up 50% in the last five years. Think about what I just said for a second. In five years, if you're doubling your money with McDonald's and your dividend income is increasing by 50%, you are up well over 100% on McDonald's if you're reinvesting those dividends. So with McDonald's stock, I think it is an easy money stock. They continue to expand their menu. They keep on offering new and new options. They keep on adjusting their consumer basis based off of consumer trends and consumer habits. And I think a lot of potential for McDonald's still lies, especially in the international markets. And they will continue to find ways to get more and more profitable and raise that dividend every year. Like I said, it's went up almost 50% in the last five years, 85 cents, 89, 94, $1.01, $1.16, and now they're up to $5 a year or $1.25 every quarter. And I think that if you buy this stock, considering that it's still at a 2.4% yield and it's recovered quite nicely from this recession, this is just one of those stocks that everybody has to own in their portfolio, at least a small slice of it. 
Next up, the last stock in the consumer sector, we're going to talk about ticker symbol KMB or Kimberly Clark. A very similar business model to that of Procter & Gamble, but if you've ever wiped, if you've ever went to the toilet and wiped, or if you've ever had to wipe your face with a napkin or a paper towel or ever change a diaper or had your diaper changed, then you have used Kimberly Clark at some point, I promise you. You can see some of their brands right here, Depend, Huggies, Kleenex, Kotex, Scott, a lot of basic products that everybody take for granted every single day that they don't think about where they come from, and guess who is the one to reap profits from that? Now, I wanted to mention something real quick. Do you remember back when the recession first hit and everyone was freaking out over shutdowns? Well, when people were buying loads of toilet paper left and right and Walmart was literally cleaned out of every toilet paper roll you could possibly find, well, guess who was the one that was manufacturing those toilet paper? Guess who was the one that was getting the profits off of those rolls of toilet paper? Here you go. You're looking at it. Good old-fashioned Kimberly Clark Corporation. If you're investing in the stock, it is at an all-time high, just like that of Procter & Gamble. It's at $157, an all-time high literally yesterday. So this stock is incredible, up 27.27%, and the dividend is quite nice considering it's at an all-time high at 2.7%. And you can see the dividends has went from $0.88, cents, $0.92, $0.97, $1, $1.03, to $1.07, so pretty good dividend raises there, and I don't think that this stock is going away anytime soon. And oh, hey, look, I didn't even notice that. Just a few days ago, they just declared another dividend. I didn't even know that. So this stock is an easy money stock, and considering that it nearly has a 3% yield and it's at all-time highs, I think everyone should own a little bit of Kimberly Clark almost no matter what. Next up in the list, the stock that we're going to go over next is an industrial company. We're talking about Caterpillar. Now, this is a company that I love. Now, one of the only bad parts about industrial companies in general, and especially with Caterpillar, is that it is very cyclical. So that means during economic booms, this stock explodes. And during economic recessions, it gets hit pretty hard. A lot harder than that of a Procter & Gamble or Kimberly Clark. You can see, though, even that it's recovered quite significantly, it is still paying over a 3% dividend yield. It's $135 a share, and it's came down a lot from its all-time highs in 2018 at about $170. So you're buying the stock at a pretty significant discount at what people valued it at over two years ago, two and a half years ago. You can see the dividends went from $77 to $78 to 86 to a dollar 03 and they're pausing raising the dividend this year and they're going to raise it next year more than likely if everything holds up i think with caterpillar considering that the stock has such great margins considering that's an industrial company and considering that they have such a large monopoly on large heavy machinery that they do, I think that Caterpillar is going to continue to thrive in the long run and management team is well prepared for its recessions and they have even raised dividends during the Great Recession during 2008. So I wouldn't really worry so much about Caterpillar and in the meantime, just wait for it to come back when the economy starts to recover and get those sweet dividends and share price gains. And the next up for industrial companies, we're gonna go over probably my favorite industrial company that I own. We're talking about 3M and by the way, I plan on buffing this up in my portfolio very, very soon. I'm up 15.25% on it. It makes up 5% of my portfolio. And you can see that the dividends went from $1.03 to $1.11, $1.18, $1.36, $1.44, and then a very small raise this year to $1.47. It's about break even from where it was five years ago. So once again, buying at an extreme discount. If people value this stock at $258 in 2018, what's stopping them from getting it back to those levels once we recover from this recession? You can see it is down, what is that, like 30, 40% from where it was during those all-time highs, and the dividend yield is almost 4%. 4%, guys. So buying the stock today, you're already locking in a 4% guaranteed gain as long as they're able to hold that dividend. This is one of the oldest streaks in dividend history where this stock has raised its dividend over 50 years. I believe it's 52. And this stock is not going to get rid of its dividend, I don't think. If I were to bet my money against it, I don't think it's going to cut that dividend. And guess what? I already am betting my money against it. 3M manufactures over 56 thousand products you heard that right 56,000. So if you're ever wanting to invest in a company that's diversified, 3M is the one to own. So trying to describe what they manufacture is pretty hard considering that they have 56,000 products. But considering that most of those are profitable, most of those are growing revenues, they're going to be just fine in the long run as they get back to normal. Next up, we're going to go over the only real estate investment trust I would ever consider adding to this list. It's the second largest position in my portfolio. It's 7% of my entire net worth. It is up 39.38% in my portfolio. We're talking about Realty Income. 
Realty Income is a stock that is the most well-run real estate investment trust in the stock market. When it comes to dividend stocks, if you're not owning Realty Income, you're not a dividend investor. If you don't own at least a small portion of Realty Income, you're not doing something right. You need to figure it out because with Realty Income, not only are you getting dividend raises every year, you're getting dividend raises every quarter. So like most dividend investors, they receive dividends every three months and they might might get a dividend raise every one year. When it comes to realty income, you're getting dividends every month, every 30 days. And not only are you getting dividends every 30 days, but every 90 days, they will raise that dividend. And they have done that for, I believe it's 26 and a half years in a row now. And they have continued to pay out dividends time in and time out, including the dot-com bubble, including the Great Recession. And I don't think that that's going to stop anytime soon. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of context with Realty Income, what they do, Realty Income is a real estate investment trust, like I mentioned, but they own over 6,000 properties. 6,000 properties. A lot of the big Fortune 500 companies that you know and love every single day, your Home Depots, your Walmarts, your Targets, your Office Depots, all these different large corporations have to buy their real estate from somebody and they usually go to Realty Income to do it. So Realty Income leases out to those huge clients, those huge customers, and then reaps the profits every year as they get to raise the rents on them and then get the profits off of those investment grade clients. I think that Realty Income, I am just so bullish on them in the long term. Term. This is just one of those stocks that, God forbid, even if they were to cut their dividends down to zero, I would probably still own them. I wouldn't sell Realty Income because I am so bullish on this company on a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 year basis. This is a stock that I will probably own to the day till I die, and I doubt I will ever sell a single share. But with Realty Income, it's a stock that every single person should own, especially if you're a dividend investor. And then next up, let's go ahead and get into the financial sector. Now, when it comes to this recession, it's really hard to recommend a financials company because financial companies are a little bit tricky. Of recommending big banks, they're a little bit hard to discuss over which is the most profitable, which is the best investment for your money based off the share price. And I think with J.P. Morgan Chase, you just got to go with the biggest and the best and the brightest. You got to go with J.P. Morgan Chase. I'm up 17.36% on it. Once again, considering buffing up my position in this as well, J.P. Morgan Chase is trading at such a good price considering the amount of net income that this company produces in a normal economic environment. Now remember, we just went through one of the worst recessions that this country has ever seen, and this company is still profitable. You can see the dividends went from 44 cents to 48 to 50, 56, 80, 90. Great dividend growth, over a double up in the last five years, and it's still up 35.71% in the last five years. It's the biggest bank in the world. You probably bank with them if you're watching this, and if not, you've at least heard or seen their bank before. They're just a good old-fashioned bank. They're always going to be profitable, and one of the best things about J.P. Morgan that I think a lot of people forget is that while they might not officially be government-backed, they're pretty much government-backed. Do you ever think that the United States government would ever let J.P. Morgan Chase go under? Do you think that they would let the largest bank in the world go bankrupt? I don't think so. The United States government needs J.P. Morgan to stay alive to help keep the economy afloat, and I think that the government would do whatever, whatever is needed in the future to keep this company alive, given that everything that they're doing is legal and legitimate towards the United States. But that said, I don't think that this company would ever go under. I think it would be the last stock in this portfolio to ever go under, if this country was on the brink of collapse because the government is going to do everything in their power to keep them alive. Next up, we have the last stock on the list. We're going to recommend a tech stock. Now, when it comes to tech stocks, you can see my tech stocks here. I did just sell Apple the other day for about a 70% gain. I do own Microsoft. I do own Visa, which is kind of a fintech stock. But when it comes to tech stock, it's a little bit tricky because most of them don't pay dividends. Or if they do pay dividends, it's usually either one of the two cases. They either pay dividends and it's an extremely small yield, like 1% or less. Or they pay an extremely high dividend like an IBM, but their business model is falling out to date with the current trends and they're really struggling. But when it comes to Broadcom, I think Broadcom is a stock that people really underappreciate. This stock, as you can see, I'm up 36.74% on it. It's the number one stock in my portfolio. It is over doubled in the last five years and its dividend is about eight times higher than it was five years ago. Did you hear what I just said? eight times not double up not a triple up 
eight times higher. So the dividend is one of the fastest growing dividends in the stock market from 42 cents, 44, 49, 50, 51, $1.02, $1.75, 265, 325. The massive run up. And considering that the stock is at an all time high just the other day, and considering that it still pays about a 4% yield, you've got to own this stock. This stock is just incredible. They have great margins. They have the number one customer with the largest company in the world. They have Apple as their number one customer, and they're diversified between software and hardware with their semiconductor chips, with their cybersecurity software. I think that this stock is just a stock that everyone should own, and Hawk Tan, their CEO, did just recently come out and say that their dividend is going to be safe throughout this recession. So if that's the truth, not only are you getting a 4% yield today, but the share price gains and the dividend growth over the next 5, 10, 15 years will probably be incredible guys so Broadcom is the number one stock in my portfolio and I have 100% confidence in owning them but there's the 10 stocks guys that I recommend every dividend investor should own in some way shape or form if you want to ask me any questions and you want to support the channel go ahead and use this referral link down below in the description like I mentioned in the beginning of the video in the description I have tons of other resources not just this referral link but other referral links as well information about me lots of other stuff go ahead and check that out you get ten dollars just for signing up just to use that link and you can help support the channel by giving me ten dollars by getting signed up there but if you have any questions for me guys about the 10 stocks that I just mentioned about the 30 stocks in my portfolio that I own or if you have any questions about my dividend income or my YouTube income anything I'd love to help or any questions you guys have or just any questions about me or the stock market in general go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section i'd love to answer any questions you guys have but thank you guys so much for watching if you made it all the way to the end i really appreciate it and i'll see you guys next time